Carlos on Instagram wants to know how to pick a winner. Well, Carlos, if I knew how to pick the winner every time, I'd be a millionaire and I wouldn't be here. I'd be lapping up the sun on my yacht somewhere. As I'm not, I'm gonna show you how I go through a race, especially when I've got a runner, and try and suss out the competition, see which horses are a danger and which horses might not do so well. Hopefully that will help you out and you can use this through the weekend and hopefully everyone can back a few winners with this system. Now for the purposes of this video, I've gone for one of tomorrow's races, so there are no prices up yet, so I don't know which will be the favorite and who might be 33 to one. This is the five o'clock at Newton Abbott tomorrow afternoon. So let's have a look and see what we find. Right, so I'm going to try and go through these fairly quickly. We're going to start from the top, damn it, I'm out. Now the things we're looking for are generally where the horse is placed. You can see, I mean, even from back here in July 2018, second, fourth, third, second, he pulled up there. I'd say he probably needed the run looking at that, coming back from a long break. Then he's won a race, then he's won again, then he's been changed hands and then he's pulled up there and then he's come out and won and finished third. Now the other thing I look at is these racing post ratings here on the right. They're not an exact science but they do give you a general idea of what sort of level a horse is competing at. Now just over 100, that's not bad at all. And as you look here, his last two runs have been his highest race and post ratings. So this is a horse that's coming into the race in good form. If I was running in this race, this would be one I'd be wary of. We'll work our down, way down. Right, now this is a Scorpion by Philip Hobbs. Um, good stallion, obviously a good trainer, Philip. So... I'd be wary of this one and if you look at those racing post ratings I was talking about back here in 2018 the horse ran consistently to 117 three times so that's obviously him when he's at his best and if you're looking through 2019 he's gone 103 102 and then his last two runs this is a horse that's clearly hitting peak form I probably expect him to run to about 115 today which makes him better than the first horse we looked at. So for me, this would be the leading fancy so far. Ballynock Cloud. This is Ballynock Cloud. I did notice Nick Schofield's riding this one. Nick's one of my favorite jockeys. He's a very good horseman. I've got a lot of time for Nick. And as we see here, we've got one race in post rating of 117, but this is knocking on for two years ago. Then he's popped up here with a racing post rating of 110 at Taunton, although he was 7 for 14. The further they get beat, the more I tend to sort of disregard this rating, to be honest. Then we've got three wins in point to points, obviously done really well in point to points. Then he's changed hands, so to say. He's come out and finished fourth at Newton Abbott, a racing post rating of 109. That's not to be sniffed at. He will be there or thereabouts, I would say. Now we're moving on to Murray Mount. Now Murray Mount hasn't won a race since September 2018, not that long ago. He has changed hands from Henry Oliver since then. And he's got a couple of racing post ratings there, 100 and just over. Um, then he's had an unseated rider, unfortunately. He's pulled up. Then he's changed hands again. And he's come out here, racing post rating of 105 six of six it's hard to tell how good that really is and then ninth of ten a mark of 60. I don't like to just disregard any horse because they can always bounce back to form but even on his best this horse would do well to feature in this race. Okay we're on Isle Road now. Isle Road has got a couple of wins there last year He's been third here and one last time out. But as you can see, the highest he scored is 100 on racing post ratings. So it's fair to say he's been winning, but he's been winning quite low grade races. So for me, he's obviously not in bad form, but he probably wouldn't be quite as good as the Philip Hobbs horse, who is my top pick out of this lot so far. So 
this is this Briac. We've got Jimmy Frost partnering up with his daughter Bryony. I used to ride out with Jimmy many, many years ago at Toby Baldins. He's a top, top lad, really good horseman. I've got a lot of time for Jimmy. So this horse last year in May finished third here, got a race and post rating of 111. Obviously you can see he's been running in a lot of point to points and it's hard to judge any of that form. Then he's come out here, finished second at Fontwell of three, got a race and post rating of 106. Then since changed hands, his first run for Jimmy, he was quite well beaten, didn't get a very flattering rating at all. On his best day, this horse might not be far away, but on his most recent run, he's probably got a little bit to prove, so maybe an each way shout. And now we're on Gentleman Moore. This is a horse who hasn't got bad form at all. We're going back to 2016 where he won a couple of races here. Racing post ratings of 102, 115. Another win there with 102. So a horse that does well in the lower grades. Consistently 97, high 90s. This is a horse that's running consistently well in low grade races. I would expect a decent run, but again, probably not quite good enough to tackle Philip Hobbs's horse. This is the Major out of Kayleigh Woolacott's yard by Major Caddo. It's a stallion I quite like. I'm not sure he's really proven as a jump sire. So we see here there's a 93 that pops up there when he was second last year. He's finished fourth and got 90, 83, 93 when he unseated Brendan there. I would be surprised if this horse finished in the first three. Right, we're on Kingston Mimosa now, who has been placing consistently this year. He's definitely having a really good year. Again, with these racing post ratings, would suggest that he's been doing well in rather low grade races. So we'll probably struggle against a couple of these. But again, I would expect him to see him run a decent race. Last of all is Starlit Knight. Now, Starlit Knight hasn't got much fluttering form at all. So this would be one I would just cross off the list. I think it would be a major upset if this one won. So we'll just forget about him for now. So we've gone through these. It looks like Dammit I'm Out has obviously got a clear chance. Pointed and sharp for me is the pick on form. But as you can see with it being a handicap, these two horses have got top weight. And they're giving away rather a lot of weight to the lower grade horses. Which in theory should even things out. But I would put my money on pointed and sharp in this race. A good each way bet for me would probably be Kingston Mimosa. Like we said, he's although he's been running in low grade races, he has placed consistently, and I think that's always good. Good for an each way bet is a horse that places more not more often than not. So I would go win on pointed and sharp, and each way on Kingston Mimosa. Obviously, I have no idea how they're going to do as this race is tomorrow. So we'll wait and see. Well, there you go. That's how I go through a race. I hope it works out like I thought it would. If you've got any tips on how you pick your winners, please share them with us in the comments. It's always interesting to hear different people's approaches. Now, over the years, I've been at the races with lots of owners and they always bring their wife and their family along. And more often than not, the owner and his friends will have sat up all night the night before going through all the form ticking off all the boxes if you like and they come there with their selections pre-picked and then usually the wife will pick a horse's name or a set of colours that she likes and more often than not the wife goes home with more money than her husband so who knows I hope you get lucky at the weekend and I'll see you soon Well, this is a bit different than the usual routine. We're at the Channel Tunnel. Anna and I are going over to Ostend for a night.
welcome to Ostend. This is where it all began for me. I grew up here from the age of three. Had a great childhood here. I'm only back for a couple of days, but really looking forward to our little break here. They've got a massive firework display on tonight. I'll try and get a bit of that for tomorrow's video. And then tomorrow we'll probably pop into Bruges on our way home. Well, I hope you all have a good weekend. I'm sure we're gonna have a great time here. I'll show you a bit of the scenery while we're here and I will see you tomorrow. Welkom naar Brugge. Wanneer je over de laatste twee dagen een hele goede tijd had. Gisteravond was het vuurwerk ongelooflijk en oostende. Nu gaan we hier een beetje rondlopen, een beetje chocolade vingen en misschien een pintje of twee. En toen weer naar rust. Dus tot morgen. Salut. Thank you. 